All right, so uh, why don't we get started, everyone? So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and uh, welcome to SOA Software. My name is Simon Barrer, Director of Technology here at SOA Software, and we have a really exciting uh, webinar today on a new product that SOA Software recently released called Intermediary for Microsoft. So thanks so much for finding the time to tune in and learn about the exciting things that SOA Software is doing to help you in your Microsoft environments for SOA and ABI. So we have about an hour today. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Hopefully everyone can um, see the WebEx and you should be able to see a, a deck in the WebEx. And uh, in the course of this hour, um, we're going to um, show some in-depth uh, product details around Intermediary for Microsoft, help you to understand how it fits into your um, Microsoft environment and uh, help you to understand how SOA software can help you in your Microsoft environments with very strong intermediation support through Intermediary for Microsoft, as well as uh, larger SOA and API management support uh, for all of your internal and external mobile needs. So um, why don't we dive in? Agenda-wise, we are going to um, spend just a little bit of time talking about SOA software, just give you a level set about the company. And then we're going to uh, uh, offer a couple of slides on Intermediary for Microsoft, but the bulk of today is a live demo where we're going to show real working code around um, Intermediary for Microsoft. So you can expect that the, the bulk of today is going to be some real, real show and tell. And then we'll close off with Q&A. Um, so we have a uh, action-packed uh, hour ahead of us, a lot of great content. Um, if you have questions uh, and you feel uh, the need to, to uh, address them uh, immediately, please do uh, just ask uh, into the phone. Otherwise, you can also uh, use the WebEx console to uh, raise your questions, and then we'll get to them at the end. We'll uh, simply go through all the different questions you guys have raised and uh, make sure that we can answer all of them. Um, so without further ado, why don't we uh, dive in and uh, talk about SOA software. So we are a uh, gold-certified uh, Microsoft partner. We've been in business for about 10 years. We have a great relationship with Microsoft, with the Microsoft community. Our uh, focus as a company is SOA and API management, which means that we help you uh, to bring the power of uh, service-oriented architecture to your Microsoft environments. Uh, we also offer great solutions for API, whether you're coming out with a mobile community of uh, Windows Phone and iPhone and Android apps, uh, or you have uh, cloud applications, web applications that need to access your internal data. We offer a very uh, wide range of solutions, single unified platform, uh, built uh, for the Microsoft platform uh, in terms of uh, managing products like WCF, BizTalk, Windows Azure, uh, SQL Server, and, and, and so on. We also offer full lifecycle management support. So we actually let you manage the lifecycle of your services as they go from start all the way through to finish in terms of their, in terms of their um, life cycle. So that kind of gives you an idea about SOA software. And our platform is uh, composed of a number of different um, components. We have uh, products that uh, deal with lifecycle management. You can see on the bottom. We also have um, products that deal with runtime, and we're going to focus on runtime services today through Intermediary for Microsoft. So those could be gateway services that could be integrating with your backend. And then we also have analytics and uh, developer engagement through our community manager product, which is going to help you to run a full user community of uh, API developers, app developers, Windows Phone, iPhone, and Android developers. So we offer a very rich, very unified stack on SOA and API. And unfortunately, we don't have too much time today to go into all of these deals as uh, details as we're focusing on Intermediary for Microsoft. Uh, but it uh, gives you an idea of uh, what our mission is as a company and what we can offer you in your environment. One last small piece is that uh, we had great recognition uh, last year in 2013. Uh, Gartner rated us very highly in the application services governance space. They recognized our strengths in, in both API management and SOA governance. So it's very nice to see that we're getting recognition from uh, the industry around our ability to help you in both your SOA and your API needs. OK, so why don't we uh, dive into the Microsoft side of SOA software's offerings. On this slide here, you can see kind of at a high level a variety of different products that we bring to bear in your Microsoft environments in order to bring SOA and API management to those environments. And you can see in the bottom right there, you have a, a series of Microsoft products and you have a series of SOA software products, things like ASP.NET, things like WCF, things like BizTalk Server and SQL Server. And most prominently, you see over there Intermediary for Microsoft, 
which is uh, living inside your data center and is managing a lot of very strategic, very important traffic for you on behalf of the clients that are perhaps living out in the cloud. You can see in the, in the golden box on the left, you have things like iPhone and Android and Windows phone apps. You are contacting Intermediary from Microsoft. You also have Windows Azure cloud presence connecting with Intermediary from Microsoft, Microsoft SharePoint and other types of portals, trading partners, and so on. So you have a wide variety of clients connecting to Intermediary from Microsoft. And Intermediary from Microsoft is a product that knows how to take those transactions coming from your consumer base, coming from your external community, and it knows how to uh, route those, secure those, monitor those, and so on with the rest of your Microsoft backend. So very, very important um, technology, and we're going to show you um, that in, de in detail during the rest of, of today's session. We also have two other products that we're showing here from SOA Software. We have Agent for BizTalk, and we have Agent for Microsoft WCF. We don't have too much time uh, today to talk on, on those products. That will be for a, a future webinar. But it gives you an idea of some of the key products that are running out on your Microsoft runtime to bring SOA and API management to your environments. You can also see the top bar where we have a series of products that are helping with the management of this environment. So we have Lifecycle Manager on the far right. We have support for Visual Studio and Team Foundation Server. We also have a Policy Manager product and a Community Manager product. These are all involved in the management of this infrastructure. And today, we're going to focus in on Policy Manager, which you can see on the top there, and Intermediary for Microsoft. But again, we don't have time, uh, regretfully, to talk about Lifecycle Manager or Community Manager. But it gives you an idea of the high-level picture, with Policy Manager providing a single console to manage your entire environment, and Intermediary for Microsoft actually managing the runtime services. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a, an idea at a high level about um, uh, about the infrastructure. So you can see here that runtime is focused on the bottom right, management is on the top, and community is on the left. Okay, so moving on from there, um, let's just quickly dive into Intermediary for Microsoft, which is a topic of, of today's webinar. So Intermediary for Microsoft was just recently released by SOA Software at the end of 2013. We're very excited about the capabilities of the product and what it can do for your infrastructure. You can see a simple uh, sort of architecture diagram on the right there about how Intermediary for Microsoft works. It is a network management point. It lives out on the network. You don't have to install it to any of your front end or back end services. So you don't install it to SharePoint. You don't install it to a uh, back end infrastructure. It runs independently. And it essentially receives uh, client traffic from the left there. And inside of Intermediary for Microsoft is a very powerful engine that knows how to do advanced processing of Microsoft based messages. And you can see there it's broken into three different components, a provider, a virtual engine, and a consumer. And essentially, the provider has the relationship with the client. The virtual does virtualization work that we're going we're to see. And then the consumer has a relationship with the service. So your back-end service can effectively talk with Intermediary from Microsoft, as can your client. And the two uh, can use this network intermediation to great effect. You can do things like monitoring. You can do things like security and authorization. You can do things like hide the complexity of your back end so you don't have to expose it to the front end. And you can independently make changes to your front end and your back end without worrying about one breaking or causing trouble to the other. So if you think about your model today, typically you have client directly talking to your back end service. And in that model, you uh, do uh, run into a lot of challenges in these areas. So by introducing um, Intermediary for Microsoft and introducing Policy Manager as a centralized uh, runtime uh, register repository that can help you manage your services, you now have a huge amount of new capability. And of course, Intermediary for Microsoft is built on and for the Microsoft platform. So you're going to be able to work with all the great Microsoft standards that you work with today, everything from Windows Azure and IIS to Windows Security and Kerberos and NTLM and Spinago, NetTCP, and so on. So everything you have in your architecture today, you'll be able to reuse. And Intermediary for Microsoft does not get in the way. It simply provides a layer of intermediation and layer of management and control over your services that can be used to great effect. And we will uh, spend the rest of the hour during the demo actually showing you live use cases with Intermediary for Microsoft as that intermediation team. Okay. All right. So that's really it for the, uh, for the uh, sort of intro material. We're going to dive into the demo in just a moment. I wanted to set up the demo by showing you kind of an architecture of what the demo environment looks like. Um, so we saw a lot of these products uh, earlier, but let me kind of introduce them again. We have Intermediary for Microsoft, of course, in the middle here, 
and is providing the network intermediation. So we're going to send uh, consumer traffic to intermediary from Microsoft. An intermediary from Microsoft is going to forward that to the appropriate back end. In this case, we have a Windows Server 2012 environment, and we're running a series of WCF services, and that's what we're going to use for our back end. And then on the front side, you, you have a series of uh, front side applications. In this case, we're going to use, make extensive use of ASP.NET, obviously very popular Microsoft technology for building websites. We're going to want, we're going to, want to show how easily, easy it is for ASP.NET to integrate with Intermediary for Microsoft. But we also have a very cool thing. We're going to show a PHP-based website. For those of you familiar with PHP, very, very popular platform. It doesn't run natively on the Microsoft platform, and so it doesn't offer the same level of integration that ASP.NET does. Nonetheless, we're going to show a bit of magic. We're going to show PHP working natively with the very same Microsoft backend that the ASP.NET application is going to use. And in that, we're going to show how powerful Intermediary for Microsoft is and how it can help you with whatever technology you're working with. Now, we're using PHP here, but maybe you're using Oracle. Maybe you're using IBM. Maybe you're using SAP. Maybe you're using an open source package. Whatever it is that you're using, we're going to be able to support you. So today, we're going to focus on ASP.NET and PHP. And that's going to show you a lot of very powerful use cases. You can imagine other uh, clients here as well. You also see there on the left, you see a bunch of mobile devices. So we don't have time, unfortunately, on today's presentation to show mobile devices and uh, REST-based interactions and APIs. We're going to save that for an upcoming uh, webinar. But that's part of the demo architecture as well, because Intermediary for Microsoft does it all. It's not limited to ASP.NET. It's not limited to PHP. It can also work with mobile devices. It can also work with the cloud. It can also work with Windows Azure. So a very, very large number of use cases can be satisfied with Intermediary for Microsoft. One last thing I want to show here is uh, Policy Manager is going to be the, uh, the uh, centralized console that we're going to use in order to control and manage all these services. And I also wanted to point out that Intermediary for Microsoft, we show two because we actually have a cluster. So we're going to show very powerful clustering capabilities, and we actually have a cluster of backend uh, WCF, Microsoft.net services running on Windows Server 2012. So this is like a real production environment. We have a real clustered backend, a real clustered intermediary for Microsoft, and a fully managed environment. So very, very exciting in terms of the um, setup. And just to give you an idea of some of the protocols that we're going to see today, you can see in, in red here, we're going to do things like NetTCP okay. in ASP.NET. We're going to do WSHTTP. We're going to do, uh, on the PHP side, we're going to do HTTPS uh, and basic auth. And on the back end, we're going to see things like WSHTTP, NetTCP, and of course, Windows Security. So we're going to show you a whole alphabet soup of different technology types. All the technology types are easily integrated using Intermediary for Microsoft. And indeed, we're going to see things like PHP calling NetTCP services on the back end on uh, uh, Windows Server 2012. So a lot of exciting uh, uh, different um, protocols here. And in terms of functionality, you can see here overlaid a whole bunch of functionality. We're going to see, uh, obviously, network mediation. We're also going to see something called contract authorization. We're going to see clustering, mediation, routing, backend load balancing, full suite of security and monitoring. So this screen is full. There are so many features here that we're all going to take a look at. Uh, you can see the value of Intermediary for Microsoft and all the things that it can do if you uh, enable this type of functionality through network intermediation in your Microsoft environment. Okay, so hopefully that, that, that sets up the demo and you have an idea of what we're going to see during the demo and gives you an idea of the different types of technology, the different types of protocols, the different types of front side applications and back side, and all the different uh, functionality and, and features that we're going to see in this environment. And as we go through this, I want you to think about your existing environments today how you're using Microsoft today and how that your picture today looks similar or perhaps a little different from this picture here. Perhaps you have ASP.NET directly talking to back in Microsoft services. Perhaps you have PHP or open source packages that uh, have a hard time calling your back end services. So you have to write additional layers or you have to come out with new back ends. So I want you to sort of compare and contrast what it looks like and think about what your environment could look like if you had intermediary for Microsoft in the picture and you had a lot of the features and, and protocol mediation and capabilities that we're showing over here. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of the demo environment. With that, I think we're ready to dive in. Are there any questions before we uh, um, actually dive into the demo? Simon, we don't need any agents to go along with the intermediary, right? I mean, 
some of the Microsoft agents as well as the intermediary. That, that is correct. Intermediary for Microsoft is entirely standalone. So when we take a look at this architecture diagram, the only components we have in the picture are intermediary for Microsoft and your front end and your back end environment. So absolutely right, you don't need it. You can if you want. But everything we're showing today uh, can run using our policy manager product and our intermediary for Microsoft product. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Any other uh, thoughts before we dive in? Yeah. How is this different from your API Gateway product? Great question. So it's actually a similar architecture uh, as the API Gateway product. It is geared towards the uh, Microsoft environment. So it's built on the Microsoft platform which is what enables us to have full integration with uh, all Microsoft technology, whether that's NetTCP, WSHTTP, Kerberos, Windows Security, Windows Azure, the whole gamut. Um, so it offers similar functionality, but the focus of intermediary for Microsoft is on Microsoft environments, where API Gateway is focused on other types of environments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, thoughts or questions before we dive in? So does it also have a similar it does. So if we go back, good question. Let me just quickly cover that before we dive in. If we go back to our architecture diagram, you're seeing a, a, a full SOA and API picture here. So you're seeing Community Manager in the top left. You're seeing Lifecycle Manager on the far right. So if you're familiar with our product set, you know that SOA software manages the entire lifecycle, including a dev portal uh, through Community Manager, including full lifecycle management of your uh, services through Lifecycle Manager. And we also add, of course, Visual Studio. So you have the same full picture that you would get with a full SOA software stack. What you're getting here, in addition, is full support for your Microsoft environments. OK, anything else before we dive in? Good questions. Does this really amount to a, a Microsoft native implementation of Network Director? E uh, so the question is, 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 this an, is this a Microsoft native implementation of Network Director? So Network Director is a, another SOA software product um, that we offer. Um, I wouldn't say that. I would say that, it, it, again, it's a similar architecture to Network Director. So for those of you who are familiar with Network Director, uh, it does offer a similar architecture, but it's definitely a different product, and its focus is on the Microsoft platform. Okay, a lot of good, good, good questions. Any, anything else? Okay, so why don't we dive in? Um, so we have about 40 minutes, and we have loads to cover. So um, let's get started. It's good to hear that uh, a couple of folks are uh, familiar with the rest of our product set, so that's really great. Um, so Policy Manager is what you're seeing um, on the screen here. Policy Manager is one of our key uh, um, uh, SOA and API management products. It offers a register repository. It's a web-based application. You can use it internally by internal architects and developers and other users. You can also expose it externally to trading partners. So it's a very powerful, very uh, widely used um, product that you're going to log into and you're going to use to manage your intermediary for Microsoft services. Let me just quickly introduce Policy Manager, and then we'll dive into some use cases. So Policy Manager has an organization tree on the left here. And this is where you represent all the different organizations. These could be external business partners. These can be internal groups within your company or organization. The organization tree makes it very easy to allow different folks to have different parts of their uh, infrastructure represented without uh, worrying about folks stepping on each other's toes. And so you can create as many organizations as you want. We're going to work inside of an organization called SOA Bank. We're going to be a fictitious global financial services uh, uh, organization. And SOA Bank is a heavy Microsoft user. And you can see within SOA Bank that they've defined a simple org structure. Normally, they would have you know organizations within organizations, but we'll keep it very simple. And within SOA Bank, we have a number of different categories. We have services, we have contracts, we have policies, and we have containers. I'm actually going to make use of all of these features today. If I open up containers, I can actually see where all of my intermediary from Microsoft okay. containers are running. So Intermediary for Microsoft is a runtime management point that runs out on the network, but it's managed through Policy Manager. So when I click on my Intermediary for Microsoft cluster, I get the details for this cluster of Intermediary for Microsoft. In this case, it's made up of two nodes, an SOA Bank 01 and an SOA Bank 02. And these are live Intermediary for Microsoft instances. They're running on the Microsoft platform. They're running on a Windows Server uh, 2012 uh, server. Uh, and they're running with an IIS. So these are live running um, 
uh, intermediate with Microsoft Network Management Points. When I click on it, I can see that I'm exposing some ports that we can actually use to host services. So this is the front side of Intermediary for Microsoft. You can see I have two different uh, ports, one for HTTP and one for NetTCP. The NetTCP is what we're going to show later when we show our native NetTCP support. And of course, my second node is also uh, running, and it has uh, two ports as well. And you notice that they're a little bit different, the ports. The 01 has 1600 as its port range, and 02 has 1800. You're going to see this during the demo because we can actually uh, isolate different ports as needed. So this essentially represents my infrastructure. Now, my infrastructure could be much bigger. I could have two or four or eight or ten or a hundred intermediary from Microsoft instances running. I can have them owned by a lot of different groups. I can break it down as much as I want. Today, we're going to be simple. It's going to be a cluster of just two, uh, but it shows you how easy it is to manage as many containers as you want. Moving, moving up from there, we have a policies tree. And policy is how policy manager manages service behavior. Policy is where we manage things like security and monitoring and transformation and all the important things that we're going to show. And we don't have too much time to dive into all the policy we're going to work with here. But I can just quickly show you, for example, here's a detailed auditing policy that we can attach to a service. When you take a policy and attach it to an intermediary from Microsoft service, intermediary from Microsoft adds that behavior to that service. So in this case, it says, please add auditing to this service, or please take away auditing. It's your choice. You can attach auditing uh, anywhere you want. You can attach any policy anywhere you want. And we're going to make extensive use of um, policy today. Next area that I wanted to show are contracts. We're also going to make use of contracts uh, in a big way today as well. Contracts is a way of controlling uh, who has access to what backend services through intermediary from Microsoft. So by defining a contract, you can say that a certain group of external consumers can access a certain set of backend services or even operations on the services. And we're going to make extensive use of contracts today. I've defined two contracts here, an SOA bank contract and an anonymous contract. Okay. Finally, we have the actual services. This is where everything comes together. We're going to use this extensively today. Essentially, you host services on the intermediary for Microsoft container. And once it's hosted, you can process messages on behalf of that service. We break down uh, services by uh, what we call physical services and virtual services. Physical services, you can see they're named PS here for physical service. They represent a backend. In this case, these are backend WCF services. Frontend services running on intermediary from Microsoft are known as virtual services. So we call them VS. So we have a series of physical services, a series of virtual services. And the virtual services all run on intermediary from Microsoft. And the virtual services all route to the physical services running on the back end. So essentially, the flow of traffic is that ASP.NET can call a service on Intermediary from Microsoft, which is a virtual service. And Intermediary from Microsoft can then uh, enforce policy and do monitoring and do contracts and so on, and then forward that message to the back end WCF service, which is the physical service. So that's essentially our flow. It's a three tier architecture. It adds that extra tier of virtual service, which gives you all the power that we are going to see today. And I can actually show you the services hosted. If I click on my container, I can actually go and see the hosted services tab, which shows me which virtual services are hosted on this intermediary of Microsoft cluster. And indeed, you can see they all are. So all, this, all the virtual services that I have defined I've already hosted, which means we can actually start using them. Okay. So those are a series of very important concepts in Policy Manager. Policy Manager is the place that you go to define all of these intermediary for Microsoft services, to define their behavior, and allow you to do things like intermediation, mediation, security, and so on. Okay. Any thoughts about that? Does that model make sense? Okay, good. So why don't we actually dive in? And I want to start showing you some cool things. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you is I want to introduce SOA Bank. So we talked on the architecture diagram about the ASP.NET website. So why don't we start off with that. So I'm going to load up my SOA Bank instance. Okay. So as you can see up here, this is an ASP.NET website. It's running on my Windows Server 2012. And SOA Bank, again, fictitious bank, global uh, uh, financial services powerhouse that has a very rich Microsoft backend. And they needed a way to run their consumer banking uh, application 
uh, against their back end in a very powerful way. So what we've done is we've used intermediary from Microsoft in order to make uh, SOA Bank work. And you can see that S the SOA Bank application has a series of different operations. We have a get balance, we have a deposit, a withdraw, and a history. So essentially this ASP.NET application is going to help us to show how your applications can be enabled through intermediary from Microsoft. Okay. So why don't we just dive in? I actually want to show some interactions. Let's make believe we're an SOA Bank customer and we want to do some banking online. So I'm going to click on the Get Balance link and it's going to give me a screen that allows me to give my uh, username and password. Okay, And it allows me to give the address of the intermediary for Microsoft uh, service that I want to send traffic to. Okay, And then I also give an account number. Okay. And normally a real application wouldn't have this address here. We're doing this in order to show that we can direct where the ASP that an application goes to. And we're going to use this over time. Today we're going to start off with uh, this one service here. This is my um, uh, basic service. I'm actually going to show this to you inside of Policy Manager. So this is a running service on Intermediary from Microsoft that's running on, uh, that's uh, managed within Policy Manager. So if I go back to Policy Manager, I can actually go show you this service. It's this service right here. And you'll notice that it is a virtual service, meaning that it's running on Intermediary from Microsoft and it routes traffic to the back end. Now, if I click on the Access Points tab here, you can actually see the address of this service. It's running at slash SOA Bank Services VS Basic HTTP. Okay, so this is one of many services we're going to show. And what I want to do is go back to my banking application and I want to use this address. Yes? Yes? I'm sorry? I'm having a hard time hearing. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, I'm sorry, I just do not understand. Why don't we save the question towards the end and then we'll, we'll catch it over WebEx. I apologize, I just have, really cannot hear the question. Okay. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to get my account balance. I'm going to pass in 12345 and of course I'm going to pass in this address of this virtual service. Let me click on the Get a Balance link. So the ASP.NET service is now going out to Intermediary from Microsoft looking for this balance. And Intermediary from Microsoft is going to do its uh, uh, mediation and security and monitoring and all the different aspects. And it's going to come back with a response after routing the traffic to the backend service. So I get back a response and I get back a balance of zero. So essentially that transaction works. That's great. It means Intermediary from Microsoft is up and running. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over and I'm going to do a deposit now. Okay. So let's say I want to do an $895 deposit. We're going to go to the same place, same intermediary from Microsoft location, same service, and let's click deposit. And there you go. Just deposited $895. Now, why don't we do withdrawal? Let's say I have to go buy some groceries. I want to withdraw $197. Again, we're going to the same location as we've been going to. So let's click withdrawal. And I've just withdrawn. And now I want to check my transaction history to see all the things that I've been doing recently. Okay. So again, going to the same service as we've been going before. So let's click on Get History. And I get a nice little table. So it says that, you know, half a minute ago, I was able to deposit. And a half a minute ago, I was able to withdraw. Okay? So we have a fully functional SOA Bank website that has intermediary from Microsoft uh, managing the back end in terms of SOA and API. Now that we have that in place, let's actually go back to Policy Manager and see if we can see some monitoring. Uh, some question? Yes. Absolutely not. The, the, yes, the address is only shown here for demo purposes. Normally a real SOA Bank customer wouldn't use this. This just lets us demo different types of services over the course of, of today's demo. Okay. Ah, so it's a regular, regular ASP.NET website, it's just that, how is the regular website connected to this particular service? Great question. It uses, it uses a, a, a built-in WCF client to contact intermediary from Microsoft using WCF style services. Okay. So you can imagine the ASP.NET integration uses whatever Microsoft technology it needs to use. In this case, it makes a service invocation to intermediary from Microsoft using standard WCF client technology. 
Okay. So, okay. Um, so yes. For so the user authentication, so you have this uh, person user ID password. Do you have other ways to do it? Yes, we have a lot of different support. We're going to get into user authentication in just a moment. We're actually not making use of user authentication yet, but we're going to show that in just a couple of minutes. Okay? okay. All right. Is it, 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 good, good, good questions. So what I want to do is, now that we had a couple of transactions go across, I want to go back to my service in Policy Manager. Remember that the service that we're hitting at this URL, this is hosted on Intermediary from Microsoft and managed by a Policy Manager. If I click on my service and I click on my monitoring tab, I have a tab here called Logs that will actually show me real live message traffic going through Intermediary from Microsoft. And you can see that as of the last couple of minutes, we have four different transactions starting at 11.28, going up through 11.29, all the way up forward. And you can see it started with a get account balance, followed by a deposit, followed by a withdrawal, followed by a get transaction history. So this exactly maps to what we were doing in the UI, in the ASP.NET website. So essentially, all that traffic going from ASP.NET to Intermediary from Microsoft is being fully monitored by Intermediary from Microsoft and surfaced on Policy Manager. And we can actually go inside of one of these transactions. And we can actually see things like where the traffic is going to. You can see it's going to a back-end WCF service. You can see where it was listening from, the, uh, the 16080, which again matches this address right over here. Okay. And I can even see message content. If I click on recorded messages, I can see the actual request coming from ASP.NET. I can even include things like headers. So you can see over here all of my headers. And I can also see in my response exactly what was going through. So I'm getting full feedback about these details of the ASP.NET transactions. OK, so this is pretty good. We have a really good first use case. But this is not nearly, yes, go ahead. Is this all pure HTTP request, right? Yes. Okay, so that means I, I don't need to use uh, .NET. I, I can use something else. Well, we're going to show that a little bit later with PHP. So just sit tight with that question, okay. and we'll come back to it. Okay? Thank you. So this is pretty good. We have a full running uh, transaction with ASP.NET. It's fully managed inside of Policy Manager. It's fully running out on Intermediary from Microsoft. So we now have really nice control. Uh, over this service. But we, we have hardly uh, scratched the surface in terms of what we can do with intermediary for Microsoft services because we haven't seen things like security and mediation and a lot of other powerful things. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start getting a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, So you'll also notice that there's another service over here called basic HTTP, I'm sorry, uh, down here called um, SOA Bank Services. Uh, Net TCP transport windows. So this is a very similar type of a service. It's a SOA bank uh, service that can do deposits and withdrawals and so on. But the reason why it's different is that it's a pure Net TCP service. When I click on access points, you can actually see that it's hosted on Net TCP and not HTTP. Okay. So the address is a little bit different. It's a different technology, and the back end as well is Net TCP, not HTTP. So the question is, is if you have an ASP.NET website today that's talking NetTCP to a backend, can you add network intermediation and support native NetTCP services using Intermediary from Microsoft? And the answer is absolutely. So what I want to do is I want to switch gears and I want my ASP.NET website to use NetTCP and not HTTP. So I'm going to uh, go again and, and, and click on that access point. You can see the address that we need to use here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over and I'm going to load up a NetTCP version of this uh, website. Okay, so same website, but it now uses NetTCP. You can see at the top here that it's still an ASP.NET website, but it's using NetTCP and not um, BASIC. And as a, as, a, as a similar website, I can go and I can get balance. And you can see that my address now is NetTCP. Again, it's pointing to that very same URI that we saw right over here under access points. Okay? So let's go back over there. And let's do another get balance. Okay? And it comes back. I get zero. Bear in mind that this goes to a different NetTCP backend WCF service. So we essentially lost our last banking transactions. Let's quickly do a couple of more banking transactions. Let's do a deposit. Let's do a withdraw. Let's call this more groceries. And let's do a lot of groceries. Let's do $2,000 worth of 
groceries. Okay, so I withdrew, and I can also get my history. So this is all being done over NetTCP, not uh, HTTP, all through intermediary from Microsoft. We can actually see messages go across. Let me click on my service, click on the monitoring tab, and under logs, I can actually see my recent transactions like get transaction history. I can see that the next hop was a net TCP service and not an HTTP service. And I can see also that my listener was on net TCP. I can also look at recorded messages and I see a similar set of recorded messages as I did with HTTP. So now we're starting to get a little more powerful. Now we're starting to cook with fire. We now have full net TCP support here, all with full mediation. Now we don't only have net TCP running natively, we also have security. So let me show you something interesting. Go back into that transaction, you will actually see that we now have a user here, SOA Bank user one. So intermediary from Microsoft actually uh, authenticated SOA Bank user one using Active Directory. So this is full Windows security. And it also did contract authorization for this user. Okay, let me actually show you by, by putting a bad password what it's like when Intermediary from Microsoft doesn't like what, what you're doing. So now it fails. Okay, or I could put the right password or I can put a user that doesn't exist, like user 100. Okay, so it just fails. Okay, so this is full live Windows security in a Windows domain called SOAMS. Let me put it back right again and click Get History. And not only do we have full Windows security, but we're actually doing something called delegation. This is a Windows uh, concept, a, a uh, Windows security concept that allows intermediary from Microsoft to represent SOA Bank user one on the back end. So the back end thinks that it's talking to the SOA Bank user one, even though it's talking to intermediary from Microsoft. I can actually show that. If I log into my Windows Server 2012 environment, which is where SOA Bank is running, this is like my, my data center, I can go to my uh, event viewer and I can actually see the successful authentications. Okay, And so what you can see over here is that that backend service is saying that SOA Bank user 1 was indeed the one that uh, was the authenticated user. So intermediary from Microsoft is essentially impersonating SOA Bank user 1 so that the backend WCF service gets the same credentials that were passed into intermediary from Microsoft. So this is an extremely powerful concept. This allows us to manage full security between the front and the back. It also allows us to essentially pass credentials from the front all the way back to the back. So very, very uh, powerful in terms of uh, what you can do here. Okay. Another thing I wanted to show you is that you know I can support different users. So I'm going to try user three and click get history. And user three works. But there's also another user. Let me show you where my users are defined because Policy Manager lets you define all of your users as well. So you can actually see where I'm defining all of my Active Directory users inside of Policy Manager. So it would make it very easy for you to add and remove and modify users. But I also wanted to point out contracts. I showed you the um, monitoring for this transaction and I showed you the contract that was used. It's this contract right over here, so a bank name. Let me actually show you how this contract works. If I go down to contracts and I open this one up, essentially SOA Bank named is a contract that sets up a relationship between, S between SOA Bank's um, consumers and its backend services like this backend WCF service. And you can see how it works. I can define all the services that I want involved in, uh, these are all the, the uh, intermediary for Microsoft services that, are, that consumers are allowed to call. And here are the users that are allowed to use it. Now you'll notice that on purpose, I only added user one and user three. So essentially user two is not part of this contract. So user two will authenticate. It's a valid Windows user, but it doesn't have access to this contract, in which case it doesn't have access to this intermediary from Microsoft Virtual Service, in which case it doesn't have access to the backend. So this is a very important and powerful concept in Policy Manager, and let's show it in action. Let's actually use user two. Remember, user one worked and user three worked. Let's actually see if user two is going to work. And indeed it doesn't. So it says that it's not authorized. So now that we're using NetTCP, we have very powerful Windows security concepts in place. We also have uh, contracts uh, in place. And of course we have the full monitoring set. So we're really starting to um, cook with fire here. We're making a lot of great progress. We have very, very powerful functionality that SOA Bank can use. 
to fully manage their Microsoft environment. So let's keep going from there. The, the next thing I wanted to show is um, I wanted to show what uh, things could look like if you um, uh, ran in a cluster. So, so far, you'll notice that we've always been using port 16 here. So this represents the first intermediary from Microsoft node. But remember that we actually have two nodes, right? We have, I'll open up my container view again. We have a node on 16, okay? And we have a node on 18. So far, uh, node 18 has been left out of the party. We haven't been giving it any calls. It's very sad. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can use the second node, just like we're using the, the first node, to show a true cluster. So all I want to do is let's go back to deposit. And let's say this is a deposit for node 2. Okay, and let's just change 16 to 18. Again, same net TCP, same URL, same everything, same user, and so on. But we're just going to change to the second node. Okay, same account. And let's just do a different amount. Let's do 844.21. So here's another deposit. So I'm sending this now to node 2 and not node 1. And didn't quite work. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, fat fingered, I fat fingered my address. Let's give that a second try. And let's see if node 2 is actually up and running. So the first time that you hit a node, there is some initialization. So you'll notice a bit of a lag uh, for that first initialization. And there we go. So the second node is still running. It's still hitting the same back end. So you know, it's the same back end system. But now we have a different piece. Let's actually do a withdrawal. And let's use 18 as well. And let's do this for a withdrawal for vacation. And let's take out. $1,754. And let's actually do this for user 3 and not user 1. Let's withdraw. There you go. By the way, user 2 should now break. And it does. Not authorized. Still not authorized. Let's do the history. And let's go look up under 18 and get our history. And there you go. Okay. And of course, 16 should still work. There you go. So we have a full cluster running. And they're identical in almost every way. So whatever policy you've attached, whatever mediation you're doing, whatever else you're doing, it's fully going to be represented on the second node. And your nodes can be as big as they want, maybe two, maybe four, eight, 12. You can even use it to cross data centers. So you can have a cluster in, in one data center and another cluster in another data center for high availability and, and, and failover and disaster recovery. So the cluster feature makes it very easy. And typically, you front uh, the cluster with a load balancer, which is what we showed in the, the original diagram. Okay. So um, this is looking pretty good so far. We have a really nice full oh, net TCP sorry. setup. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry about the load balance at this cluster. So are you seeing this uh, policy, whatever that is that doing this uh, automatically for the balance? Because when you when you type different port, I they're gonna go to different uh, location, right? Like eighteen or sixteen. Sure. So when you build when you build an intermediary for Microsoft cluster, you typically do front it with a load balancer like an F five or a Cisco because you want to be able to have your front end route traffic across that cluster. Okay. 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 All right. So we've been doing a lot of great stuff with NetTCP. Um, why don't we uh, change gears a little bit? And I promised that we were going to show uh, PHP and show a completely different technology. So why don't we do that? So let, let's uh, close NetTCP and ASP.NET uh, for just a moment. And let's actually switch over to uh, PHP. And this is also a, a, uh, uh, an SOA bank website, essentially an identical website, but it's fully running on the PHP platform and not on ASP.NET. So the reason why I love showing PHP and love these use cases so much is because it shows how you don't have to have a Microsoft environment to integrate with your backend. PHP is about as far as it comes to running in an enterprise environment. It's a great technology for building complex websites. It has loads and loads of features. It has an amazing community but it doesn't have the kind of features that a Java platform or a Microsoft platform has. So I love using it to show how you can still integrate using intermediary from Microsoft. So why don't we actually show this? So the first thing I want to do is click on the get balance. And you know, everything works basically the same as the ASP.NET. It's just that we're running in PHP. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to use a different service here. We're going to use this basic HTTP, which is the simplest service that we have. Let me show that to you over here. Essentially, this has no security. It has no net TCP. It has nothing. It's a pass through. Just to show you a very simple first case. Okay. So let's go and sorry. Wrong 
the screen. So let's go and um, show this working. So I'm going to hit my first node. And again, these services are running on the same cluster, net TCP, PHP, HTTP, and so on. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit it on my first node. So let's do a get balance. Sorry, I think I forgot to name this. Okay, 697, okay, and I should be able to do a deposit as well. Okay, a withdraw, with groceries, and then my history. Okay, so fully working PHP website. It's integrating through intermediary from Microsoft. It's hitting the back end. But this isn't entirely satisfying because you would never have a straight HTTP website. You're always going to have some form of security. You're going to have integration with Active Directory. You're going to have Net TCP or WSHTTP or MSMQ, whatever it may be. So let's actually show a more sophisticated example. And this is going to be one of the coolest examples um, that we're going to show today. I have another service here called... Um, basic HTTP, basic auth to net TCP transport window security. So this is an example of a mediation. This is going from a certain technology on the front to a certain technology on the back. In this case, the back end is net TCP with window security. Now we've already seen this with ASP.NET. The ASP.NET backend service was exactly this. But the difference was that in ASP.NET, the front was also net TCP. But in this case, we're gonna make it easy for PHP by using basic HTTP and basic auth, okay? So essentially, we're gonna send a very simple basic auth message to Intermediary for Microsoft. Intermediary for Microsoft is going to authenticate. It's then going to route that message and use NetTCP on the back end. So very, very cool. This is an example of mediation of multiple types. We have a security mediation here because we're going from basic HTTP to Windows security. We also have a protocol mediation because we're going from HTTP to NetTCP. So let's go back here, and what I want to do is I want to get the address of this service so I can plug it in. Okay, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to pop it in my box here. Okay, so transport win, and let's send this off. And there you go. So even though we are using a very simple basic HTTP up here and over here, we're actually talking net TCP to the back end all through the magic of intermediary from Microsoft. Let's also, by the way, make sure this is working on the second node in my cluster, just to be sure. And indeed it is. So my entire cluster is working. Let me actually show you that mediation in action. If I go to my monitoring tab, I can see my recent activity. If I double click, I can see that the next top URL was net TCP, not HTTP, but the front side was basic auth. We can also see that we are still authenticating user one against Windows security. And indeed, we can also show that on the back end, let me go back to my server, we can also show that we are passing that credential down. So you can see over here, it is still user one. So essentially, Intermediary from Microsoft has taken the basic auth credentials, converted it into Windows security, uh, did all of its contract work, and then forwarded it down to the backend service. And indeed, what I can also do is I can try and, and see what happens when I put in something like a bad credential. So let's do user 5. Okay, and that fails. Let's also see what we do with a real user that's not contract authorized. There you go. So I have full functionality here. This is a PHP website. Um, you, know, you don't have to, to clean off your monitor. You're seeing uh, the same thing I'm seeing. This is a PHP website talking to a net TCP backend. Before with uh, ASP.NET, we had a lot of uh, great benefits, but here we have even more benefits. We're able to expose whatever we want on the backend to whatever type of technology. This could be Oracle. This could be IBM, this could be open source packages, and of course it can be PHP. So we have a lot of uh, powerful functionality that we're able to put into play here. One last thing that I want to show in terms of mediation is I want to show one other piece. I want to show what happens if we don't um, use any credentials at all. So I'm going to open up uh, another service here called um, basic HTTP to net TCP. So this is essentially the same service. The difference is it doesn't put in any credentials, okay? So what I want to do is I want to use this address now, and I want to ask the question of what happens when PHP doesn't even pass in any credentials to create the simplest possible interaction. 
So let's pop this in. Okay, and let's send this across. And it still works. Indeed, I can even remove these credentials. And it still works. And in fact, I could even do something like, let's go do another deposit. And again, we remove our credentials. And let's do this for a um, paycheck two. $450, and let's send it across, and there you go. So what you're looking at here is a full integration without any security. But you may ask yourself, how is that possible? The NetTCP service on the back end requires security. How is it possible that PHP can pass in no credentials, but it will still work? Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we go back to our data center, and why don't we see what was actually um, authenticated on the back end? You can see over here, it was uh, an identity called network service. Network service is the identity that Intermediary from Microsoft is running on. So Intermediary from Microsoft can even inject a brand new credential into the message and use that in communications with the back end. So this gives you very, very rich control of your environment. So you can very carefully control what users are presented to the back end. And it may not even be a user that came in from the, the front end. It might be a user that was injected from Intermediary from Microsoft. Okay. So, so far, so good. Things are looking really, really good. We're really uh, cooking with fire here. Why don't we move on? I have a couple of other uh, topics I want to show. I know we're getting short on time. We have about five minutes. I wanted to show um, routing. So let's do this. Um, so far, you'll notice that if I go to my monitoring, you'll notice that all of the backends, they were all using the node one. I essentially have a cluster backend, not just node one. I have two nodes. And I have a node one and a node two. And I want to ask the question, is it possible for us to reroute traffic to either node one or node two? And the answer is absolutely. So to show you how to do that, what I want to do is, why don't we stick with the current service that we're on, just because that's where we are. And what I can do here is I can go to one of my operations. Let's go to uh, get bounds, the first one. Okay. I can actually change where intermediary from Microsoft sends traffic to. Today, it's, it's sending it to node one. But I don't have to send it to node one. I can send it to node two. So why don't we go to node two, which is this one down here, and why don't we actually change it? Okay, so that's node two. Click next, and I can choose which operation. So I want the same get account balance on node two. Click next, and that's all it takes. I can dynamically, using Policy Manager, change all the routes of whatever goes into Intermediary for Microsoft in terms of the back end. So to test this out, what I want to do is I want to go back to my get balance. Okay, and I want to use the same URL. And again, we're going to stick with the PHP website here. I'll still don't have to pass in anything here. And let's send a couple of get balances across. There's one. There's two. Okay. And let's see where that actually went to. If I go to my monitoring, and I can see I'm getting my get balances, but let's see now where it goes to. You can see now it's going to my net TCP service on cluster node 2, not cluster node 1. But the other operations have stuck to node 1. For example, you'll notice that my balance is 0, even though I've been doing withdrawals. That's because cluster node 2 doesn't have the same data as cluster node 1. But why don't we do this? Why don't we do a, um, a different operation? Let's do a deposit against the same node, and let's see what happens. I'm sorry, let's do a transaction history. so We can see if we're getting real data. Okay, you can see we're still getting real data because we're still tracking to node one. If I go back here and I refresh, I can actually see in my transaction history that we're going to node one. So I have very, very tight per operation control of exactly where intermediary from Microsoft will send its traffic to. Another thing I wanted to show you related to that is I wanted to show you um, load balancing. So let's actually go and put that back. Let's go back to um, Operation. Actually, that's okay. I don't need to put it back. What I want to show you is what happens if you have a next hop cluster and you want to route and load balance across the cluster. So let me show that. So what I can do here is today we are going to, I'm sorry, actually I do want to put that back. I apologize. Let me go back to my get a, uh, manage routing again. And let me just put this back to one. In the TCP. And get account balance. Okay, so I'm just going to set it all back so it all goes to node 1. And now what I want to do is I want to go to node 1. Let me see here. I want to go to my back end, 
and I actually want to add another access point so that I can build a cluster. So what I want to do here is I want to go in here and take this address. Okay, and I want to actually go and add a new access point. So I'm going to click Add Access Point, and I'm going to use the same uh, bind. Actually, I'm sorry, let me get this whole URL. I apologize. I'm take this entire URL. This is the URL of Node 1 in my backend. And I go back, and I say Add Access Point, and then I can call this my Node 2 access point. I click Next, and here's where I put my URL. So I'm going to change the URL in only one way. It's still NetTCP. It's still on the same server, but I'm going to say it's node 2 and not node 1. Okay, so that I essentially now have two access points. Okay, and by having two access points now, Intermediary from Microsoft is automatically going to load balance across them. So before we were just going to one, now we're actually going to load balance. This way, Intermediary from Microsoft can work with an entire backend cluster. So to see this work, I should be able to remember that we have different data on each one. So I should be able to call it and see it routing to one with data and one without. So let's, let's stick with this use case and let's send it across. Okay, get history. And you see I have no history now because I've hit node 2. Let me actually show you hitting node 2. If I go back to my service, getting a little bit dizzy here with all these services. Uh, yeah, this is what I want. So this is my basic HTTP. If I go to my get transaction history and I go here, we can see that the backend that was chosen was no two. And that's why I'm not getting any data. But let me send it across a second time now. Now I'm getting data. Why? Because Intermediary from Microsoft is load balancing NetTCP to uh, load one now. Let's actually go back in. And we can actually see node one. So we have live dynamic load balancing across the back. And indeed, if I keep switching back and forth, I'll just keep going back between data and no data. So no data is two. Now it's one. No data is two. And now it's one. We just keep on going back and forth. And of course, the full cluster should still work. So if I go to 16, if I go to my, my intermediary node one, I get nothing. And then I get something. So both intermediary from Microsoft are balancing across the back. Okay. So um, there were a couple of more things that I wanted to show, but we have run out of time. So we'll, I think we'll break here. And let me just um, kind of review and recap everything that we saw. I hope you guys found this very compelling. We started off with an ASP.NET website. We've managed all of our SOA bank interactions through intermediary from Microsoft. ASP.NET used NetTCP, full security, contracts, monitoring, uh, load balancing, and so on. And then we moved on to PHP, and we showed how PHP could fully integrate. It could still make use of full Windows security, uh, NetTCP, all of these features, even though PHP really does not know how to integrate with these technologies on its own. And we showed a variety of different features. Everything we've shown just now just scratches the surface in terms of what Intermediary for Microsoft can do. I hope you're starting to realize what a powerful addition it can be to your data center and the new architectural doors that it can open up in terms of how you can very effectively manage your Microsoft infrastructure. Before we dive into questions, um, just a quick note about one piece that we didn't get to show today. If you go back to the uh, diagram of the demo, we had the mobile devices. So we didn't have time today to show you the full mobile story, including Windows Azure and mobile services and Windows Phone, iPhone and Android, REST-based services, all that very cool functionality. We will do that in our next webinar on Intermediary from Microsoft. So definitely stay tuned for that because that is the other half of this entire story. So there's a lot of exciting stuff there. So I think we'll close now for questions, but you know, hopefully you found this uh, very exciting. Um, you see a lot of uh, potential here for your environments and um, you know, hope to talk with you soon on the, uh, what you guys are doing in your Microsoft environments and how we can help. So with that, um, why don't we um, close it up for uh, questions. And um, uh, please, if you have any questions, please ask. And um, you can also uh, ask in the in the chat bar. Uh, Simon, uh, when you showed the authentication use case, was the authentication done both by the intermediary and by the backend? Yes. So the NetTCP use cases where the backend was NetTCP, both intermediary from Microsoft and the backend did authentication. Essentially, the backend did a a uh, Kerberos Windows security reauthentication, and by the way, authorization as well. So it, it's a full Windows security use case. And obviously, Intermediary from Microsoft did the same thing.
Okay, so are there... You add these users, yeah, one quick question, you add the users to the, the policy manager, is it, is it added to the Active Directory or is it key? It's actually pulled, good, good question, it's actually pulled from um, Active Directory. So these users actually exist inside of an Active Directory domain and we simply bring them in. We, we have the power to query Active Directory and pull these users in. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, we support LDAP and we support Active Directory. Actually, Policy Manager supports a very rich security set. Uh, very, very long list, including SAML, um, LDAP, Active Directory, um, uh, you know, a very wide variety of different standards. So yes, absolutely. Okay, there's a question in the chat uh, window here. Um, any failover capability in addition to the load balancing of multiple physical endpoints? So if a downstream server goes down, so that's a great question. The current product set does not offer failover capabilities. So essentially, the question is, um, if one of those two nodes were to go down, is intermediary uh, for Microsoft able to stop routing traffic to it? And the answer is not today, but that is on our roadmap. So it's a great question, and you should look forward to that functionality. In Okay. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward for more, uh, I think, more mobile integration. Do you, do you know approximately when, when would that be? Yes, we haven't scheduled the date, but definitely very soon. Um, so we're very excited about it as well. So definitely check back, and we're going to have a full presentation just like this one where we extend the SOA bank story, and we actually have Windows Phone apps running banking against this very same backend infrastructure. So definitely stay tuned. Sure. So it depends upon your use case. So we showed with PHP that the user could authenticate very simply using basic auth. And we could turn that into a full Windows security use case down to the back end. So that's one very valid use case. You could also have internal users and internal websites like ASP.NET that can do full Windows security, in which case that's acceptable as well. So we support a very large number of use cases. We also support, for example, um, API OAuth REST use cases, which we haven't shown here, and we'll show on our next presentation. So the, the goal of Intermediary for Microsoft and NSOA software overall is to support all the different security use cases that your, uh, all of your consumers need to support your full infrastructure. Okay, other questions, feel free to, to uh, blurt them out here or you can enter them in the chat window in the WebEx. Absolutely. Um, so if there are no other questions, we can close. Um, so actually I have a, I had a closing slide. So um, I guess two thoughts on that. The first is, is please do visit us at www.soa.com Microsoft um, to learn more about our full Microsoft um, offering. So that's a great place to go. Also, you can reach me uh, if you have questions. Uh, I don't have my email address on this slide here, but the address is simon, S-I-M-O-N, dot Barrer, uh, B-A-R-E-R-E, -E at soa.com. So do feel free to reach out if you have any um, thoughts or Okay, so that concludes uh, today's webinar. Definitely appreciate all the time that you guys have taken out to learn about this very exciting technology. Hope you got a good idea about how it can help you in your environments. It's definitely very, very powerful. It has quite a bit of magic built into it to make your environments shine and to give you the power to solve all the different challenges and use cases you have in your environment. So we definitely look forward to hearing from you soon and definitely look back, uh, check back uh, in terms of our upcoming webinar on API and mobile and, uh, and uh, community manager and, and those technologies. Um, so other than that, thank you so much for your time and we'll be talking soon.